reserve list cards are starting to get people's attention again. People are starting to take advantage of a great situation. Welcome back everyone. MTG Moxman here and thanks a lot for hanging out with me on the channel. It is the Hot 10 Reserve List Edition every Sunday. Got the coffee in hand, prepared to talk about it. People may not be just buying low-end reserve list anymore. The market is shifting. People are paying attention to the fact a lot of these cards have dipped in prices. Why go ahead and buy a collector's box of Double Masters, even with the great content within it, for 400 bucks when you can get a dual land and be guaranteed a return on investment for the future? That's the difference the Wizards can't solve in their puzzle pieces of how they're doing value. Textured foil or not, that scrubland is going to be more valuable because it's not coming around. It's not being reprinted. And let's face it, there's a lot less of those cards out there than everyone realizes. It just it never it never hits anyone until way later. Wait another 20 years, see how it works out. So I love these videos, and I'm starting to see a shift from the lowest end reserve list cards being bought to more mid-range cards that used to be 50, 60, 100 bucks. When they're 20, 30 bucks, people know it's a deal. They're starting to get in there. So don't worry, we're going to start today's video down the yellow brick road. We start at number 10, we're going to end at number 1, the hottest selling card this week. And of course it does pretty much change up every week because people's attitudes and what they feel like buying on the reserve list, it changes every week. There's lots of reasons why people buy reserve list cards. Alright guys, let's start this video, let's get this thing done and let's enjoy ourselves on the way. I hope you're ready, hope your coffee's hot, let's get started. So here we are starting out with Lake of the Dead from Alliances, 19 sales, July 30th to August 5th, 2022. Now this card only has an average price right now of $112 US. The market price is $105 and it's 77 euro and 62 cents to get that card into your house. Now locally here in Canada, if I want to buy this, it's around $150 still Canadian. But when you look at where this card has been as high as $300, and it has fallen this low and you can find heavily played copies on TCG player for 50, 60 bucks. Come on, this is a steal, it's a grab. People just spent this week alone around $2,000 US to buy these copies and they are from near mint to a couple of graded copies all the way through to some heavily played. A very smart deal I think in my mind for players to grab these. People have got their eyes open, they know what they're looking for, they recognize the future value of cards like this. Just because it's not hot right now, doesn't mean you shouldn't be collecting up a couple to have if you've never had them before. I still have my place that I haven't had to buy any extras, but at this point, it'd be kind of nice to grab some for the, for the Patreon, for the giveaways, so I'm looking at it myself for the future. It's an amazing card, guys. Don't forget what cards like this can do in Commander when you look at them and you recognize how amazing it is. You know what? I didn't zoom this card in because obviously it's a Saturday morning, but there you go. When you look at that and see Lake of the Dead comes into play, sacrifice a swamp or bury the Lake of the Dead. It taps to add one black to your mana pool, but you can sacrifice a swamp to get four black mana. Guys, it's amazing. It doesn't even sacri say sacrifice an untapped swamp. So you can just like tap the mana, get one for it, then sack it, get four more. That's crazy. This card is an amazing card that should be in most people's collections. If you're a serious player who's just getting in, it's a very affordable card right now. That or a Ragavan, I'm taking him. I, I'm sorry, I'm taking him. I'm going to be taking the Lake of the Dead every time over him because Ragavan's going to get reprinted. That Lake of the Dead with that gorgeous artwork is never coming around again. It's just, it's amazing. That's all I can say. All right, our next card, guys, is Amulet of Unmaking. Now, I kind of forgot this card existed. I've seen it a couple of times. I have seen it played. Um, back in the day. Now with 20 sales, it's not like a significant high amount of sales. Um, somebody obviously did a mini buyout because it's a pretty cheap card at only $1.84 as the market value. The average is $1.75. Um, it is from Mirage though. We're talking an old card. And for those who didn't know what this one does, you got to take a closer look. But the Amulet of Unmaking is a 5 casting cost generic mana um, and 5 to use it. Remove Amulet of Unmaking from the game. Remove target artifact, creature, or land from the game. So you can target people's stuff and get it out of the game. Now, I saw this one time where the person had a way of going into exile to get things back. 
and they kept kind of recycling this card over and over again. And it became a real pest and nuisance, but they still had to have like mana flares and all kinds of stuff to really make this card effective. The artwork's great. I guess as a one-off removal for something, it's not the worst card you could possibly have, and it does fit into any deck. So a Hail Mary kind of like removal spell card, I get it. And it doesn't come into play tapped itself, so you can use it right away if you have a bunch of mana. So I guess mid to late game is something's blocking you. Not the worst card to have around. I mean, it's cheap enough that, you know, buying a set of four near mint for 10 bucks, come on. It makes perfect sense, I guess, in that sense. Uh, we'll see what happens later with a card like this. I don't see it hitting any high points. It's only been as high as like four or five bucks. It's never had major spikes, so keep that in mind too. But it does remove him from the game, which I kind of like. All right, the number eight card this week is Fork. 21 sales this week. Now, this card has been as high as around the $160 mark. The first time it was ever bought out and revised. Um, it's going through its you know growing pains of how valuable this card really is but it is a decent card. And with the falling price where it's at, a lot of players are taking advantage. They're going for the near mint copies and Fork's been on the list a lot of times. It's either on the list or off the list, but it looks like it managed to hang in there this week and get some sales up. Some people took notice that the price is continuing to dip and they said they just, they gotta have it. Now it's an interrupt, which doesn't really exist anymore. Magic It's more of an instant nowadays. Two red and it says, any one sorcery or instant spell just cast is duplicated or copied, guys. Treat Fork as an exact copy of that, that spell, except that Fork remains red. Caster of Fork chooses the copy's target. So you can copy whatever you want. You can make people draw cards, which is what we used to do when we had it like with Brain Geyser. You'd be like, Brain Geyser, you for 20. Fork, Fork, Fork. And you're like, oh my goodness. And they're drawing like 60 cards and the game just ends for them. That's how we used to torture people sometimes. But there's a lot of spells nowadays like Time Stretch and bigger spells that can be you know, copied over and utilized in an appropriate way with, with cards like Lithoform Engine, like you can du double duplicate and triple things over. It can become a very sick combo to have cards like this in your deck. A blue red deck containing this one. And what's there's a blue copy of it as well. Um, it makes perfect sense, okay? At this price level, I can see why people are grabbing it. Makes perfect sense to me. Number seven, Null Rod is back in business. People said, you know what? We missed Null Rod not being there. 22 sales from July 30th to August 5th, 2022. Now the average price here has been dipping, but it's had a bit of an uptick. And that's because a lot of people were buying copies of it. So it's just a little tiny curve on the tail of like four or $5. It reached as low as like 83, 84. It's kind of upticked a bit. But with Brothers War and stuff coming along, this does make sense that the sales on this card would start to go up. People would start to notice it. Because as a two casting cost generic artifact, and it says players cannot play any artifact abilities requiring an artifact uh, activation cost. So when you look at this card and you recognize what this thing can do to you, and if you're not using artifacts in general and you just put this out against other players, you're just going to mess them up so bad. They're going to be so upset at you. They're going to get you out of the game as quick as they can. All right, guys, let's go ahead and take a look at number six this week. That's right. I banged the mic and it is Thrall Champion because I was so excited. Thrall Champion is back in the house with 26 sales from the 30th to the 5th. And you can see there the price has just tanked. This thing only reached, I think, as high as $10. Uh, pardon me for a second as I drink some coffee. That's what Saturday mornings can do to you. Um, Got to wet the whistle, keep the voice going. So as this card has fallen in price, players have grabbed it. If you wanted moderately played copies on TCG Player, you'd only be paying two bucks a copy. So a play set of four is like $8. And don't forget, if you're buying anything on TCG Player, please remember to use my affiliate link found inside the description of every video I do. It does help the channel out immensely. So even if you're not a Patreon, you can just click that link when you're shopping. It brings you right to their webpage, but it does allow a little extra cash to flow my way to let me get stuff for the channel. So thanks again for those guys who do it and support the channel. I appreciate it. So two bucks a copy, guys. Near Mint, I bought some copies, I think, for three or four bucks this, just this week. I had to take advantage of it because at one point they were $12, $13 for Near Mint copies. So I had to grab it. The market price is $6.06 and falling. Let it keep falling, I say, because at this price point, you can't go wrong. Okay, let it keep going down. For anyone who loves Thralls and likes the idea of maybe some Thrall support coming back in Dominaria United, we don't know what they're gonna do. They could decide to give Thrall support, which means a card like this could just uptick massively, and that would be hilarious. Because, you know, I have some copies. I have a few copies sitting around. I do, I really do. 
All right, let's go ahead. Let's take a look at number five this week, and that is going to be Fast Bond. Now, this card has been as high as like $80, 75 to 80 bucks for a near mint copy. You can get a near mint copy right now for $25 US. Near mint, TCG player. eBay has got copies a little more expensive because of the shipping and stuff, but wow. Some of the deals on cards like this, and yes, I get it, it's still banned in Commander. Only if you want it to be, you and your playgroup decide, just like me and my playgroup decide what we consider to be banned or not banned. And you look at that card and say, really? You don't think it should be unbanned? Of course it should be, come on guys. This card should totally be unbanned at this point in the game with all the card destruction stuff we have nowadays. But this card allowing you to put extra land into play is an amazing feature to have. It's an old school card I played with since the very beginning when I finally got a multicolored deck. I still use it to this day. It's fast bond and it was up to 75 bucks. It's two thirds off. Come on. The thing's a steal and I can see why people are buying it. 36 sales tells you that people took notice. Now, number four is a little bit of a conversation. So let's get to number four. Number four, I'm actually going to talk about in two areas. The fact there are 37 sales for Savannah from Revised. Look at that price of an average market value of $370. Let's just knock it down to like 350 bucks. You times that by the 37 sales, you're talking over $10,000 in sales US for this card. But the other card I'm not showing you guys is Scrubland. Scrubland is tied for number four. They both tied, which is why I'm talking about it. Scrubland had 37 sales this week with roughly the same price point. $20,000 US is a very small amount of money to be putting into dual lands. But so many, that's 74 dual lands that got bought in a seven day period. If you don't think players are noticing that they can trade in some double masters cards, some texture foils at this point to get these cards that will continue to go up, that's what people are missing out on. They don't recognize the fact that Wizards isn't touching the reserve list. They have no intention of touching it. They have no reason to. They can print other cards around it, which give them much more revenue stream, much more cash flow. These are the, the pinnacle, so they always keep things a few notches below. They keep you interested with the new land bases they do, but they never give you the best of the best. So when players want it, that's what they go out and buy. This goes into commander decks, old school, legacy, vintage, kitchen table magic guys amazing and i'm so i'm glad people are taking advice on some of this stuff from people getting some amazing cards and picking up some of these cards by trading other stuff in it makes perfect sense i can trade in four or five cards get like three four hundred bucks maybe uh pitch in a 50 60 dollars and get a near mint copy yeah that's what i'm talking about all right let's go ahead let's jump down to number three that is going to be leeches is still hanging in there now this is not an expensive card but with new phyrexia being involved with the Phyrexians coming into Dominaria, we know they'll probably be poison counters. And of course, Leeches takes an uptick at that point because this can remove those nasty poison counters and keep you in the game. And I guess people are probably hedging their bets that this is going to have some serious value going forward. At least a couple of bucks, right? I mean, it's Leeches after all. I love this point. Look at the, look at the flavor text there. Where our potions and what is it called? Potions and powders or whatever uh, fail? Maybe. <laughs> Nature will be cured. I mean, it's a cute card. I like it. Hard to read from this distance, but you get, you get what I'm talking about here. It has a good little flavor text. It removes the poison counters. It does regular damage to you. And it's the only card in the game that does it. And that's why people buy it. And there's a lot of copies that have sold in the last 30 days. So as soon as Dominator United, as soon as we knew there was Phyrexians, the uptick on these things got pretty serious. Okay, guys? Now, let's jump down to number two this week, and that is going to be the Anzarin Ruins from Homelands. 63 sales this week. Now, this card is starting to uptick. You can see at the very end of the page there, a little bit of a tail is going to this card now. Some value is being found here that people are saying, you know what? This is ridiculously low in price, and it really is. Two red, two other. Choose a creature type. Creature of that type, don't untap. That's brutal. That is brutal in Commander. Put that in your goblin deck and just smash into some elves and they never get to untap. You see what I'm talking about? And if you add other things in that make creatures have upkeep or you make it so flyers don't fly anymore like gravity sphere and stuff, you can mess people up, guys. There's whole decks that used to be built around just freezing the game, slowing it down and neutralizing an opponent's entire deck one card draw at a time. Amazing card. For less than five bucks US, seriously, this is one of those Homelands cards that probably should be around 20, 30 bucks, and it's not. I love it. 
It's letting players get in there. Somebody bought a lot of copies this week. This is a small buyout. That's what it is. But it was from several sources, not just one. So that's interesting as well. All right, guys, you've held on long enough. Let's take a look at the number one selling card this week in the reserve list. And that is going to be Haunting Wind from Antiquities. 71 sales this week, July 30th to August 5th of 2022. The average price is $120 US. The market price is $52.92 US, 29 euro and 28 cents to get it into your house. It's antiquities, guys. It's an old school card. For those who don't know what this does, this is a one black mana, three generic enchantment. Each time an artifact in play is tapped or its activation cost is paid, Haunting Wind does one damage to that artifact's controller. It is not triggered by continuous effects, which means artifacts that, you know, like a Howling Mine, there's no activation cost. You just draw cards with it. So those aren't affected. But everything else where you're going to pay mana, you're going to really pay for some damage. And with Brothers War coming later this year, there were some people specking on this card early into 2022. They're just back at it again, picking up more copies as the price dipped. And you can see it immediately started shooting up again. Just because too many copies left the market in a two-day period, it causes that that massive pendulum swing on the market. The market knows what's going on, says, hey, 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 what's going on with these cards? So let me just sum this up, guys. The reserve list is selling very well. Just not a lot of people are doing it. And people are picking up the best cards they can afford, or they're buying the worst card that they could never afford before. Who cares if it's a beat up dual land if you're gonna play with it? If you're gonna put it in a commander deck, you're gonna go for heavily played. And it's still gonna retain value for the future. And that's what people are doing. Anazar and Ruins, people are going for near mint copies because it's a low-end reserveless card. If something triggers that off later, if Thrall Champion finds a home all of a sudden into a Thrall Tribal deck, come on guys, you're going to see 10... If, if they give us decent Thralls, Thrall Queen, Thrall Overlord, just some variation of that type of thing, and they give us 10 or 12 Thralls inside Dominary United, it's going to cause a whole slew of things to happen. And people won't even see it coming. Anyway... Thanks a lot for hanging out. Thanks for chilling out with me on the channel today. I hope you guys had a great time like I did bringing this information to you. Don't forget to leave those comments in the comment section. Give this video a thumbs up. And I look forward to seeing you guys later on the live stream because we do a Sunday night live stream. And of course, for Monday's video in the comment sections. Guys, have an awesome day today and have an awesome day in the world of Magic the Gathering wherever you are. And of course, a giant shout out to all the fantastic patrons on the channel who make videos like this possible each and every day, guys. Patrons make the world go round. That's what makes this channel spin. Thanks again for that support. You made it to the end. You're here. Awesome to have you. And if you made it this far, you got to give me a boomstick inside the comments section to let me know you were around, that you're one of those type of people. Guys, have an awesome day today. We deserve it. An awesome day.